Hello again from a still very cold and nippy, wintry South Africa. Last week we, oh, well not last week, the last episode, um, I had fun making the episode on all the weird and wonderful languages of sailing. And I found it quite funny when you start going into the history of some of this terminology. It turned out very funny, so it was fun. And as you can see this week, I'm going to be sharing a um, little bit of medical emergencies on the boat with you guys. And I'm even going to attempt to show you how to do, do stitches and how to remove fish hooks. most prominent or the prone things that happen, what causes injuries on, on sail yachts or any boat for that matter of fact, is actually tripping and falling. But as you can well imagine, I mean, just look at the, the, the your, your, your top deck. There is just so many obstacles going around there. So that is one of the major, major things because it causes lacerations, bruising, head injuries. It causes all type of injuries. So to prove... There's a, there's a strategy, a, a boating strategy that goes around. It says one hand for you and one hand for the boat. So always, especially when it's rough out there, always brace yourself. That's the one way. Um, and interestingly enough as well, the spinnaker pole, for instance, you can stow that away if it's not in use. That also causes a lot of tripping. Um, another thing is getting caught between the lines or the sheets. Um, when you winch as well, you know, if your finger gets caught in there, it's finger burns, it's laceration, they break, whatever. So that's the second most prone thing that can happen on a yacht. And now I'm going to show you, because of all the lacerations and stuff, I think it's appropriate maybe to try and show you now how to do the stitching thing. Okay, so as I've mentioned, um, there's a lot of falling around and bumping heads and everything going around on the boat. So inevitably, it's going to lead to lacerations. Now, I have Googled, and I've done a bit of online training, or research on how to do, put stitches in, as I, I think they put it, southern, 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 something like that. So I will attempt now to demonstrate in my ignorant way how to do that, I think at this stage I should probably mention a disclaimer. I've gotten myself a nice pork belly. Apparently that is what they use. They use 
picks to um, at the universities with the medical students. And I can quite feel why, because it really feels like a human. So, um, yeah, disclaimer, no animals, nor humans for that matter, got hurt in this whole exercise. So I've got myself here, um, surgical noodle, and the instruments, as I'm going to be posting quite a number of videos on how to. So you can look at that and I'll tell you exactly what to do and where to get, etc. So according to the videos, you grip it about a little way in there. And you can see I've got myself a nice big needle in the demonstrations. I have small little needles, which I think is going to be a bit of a hassle. Remember the boat is moving around, everything's moving around, so I think this is going to work great. So what you need to do is put it in here on the one side. And they say that distance should be the same as the distance going down. And then coming up on the other side, that distance there and that distance there needs to be the same. Push it through and pull it. And then you pull it until there's only about three centimeters left on the other side. Okay, that is step number one. Step number two, this is the one that I'm battling with, is to actually tie the knot. And this one, the first one, I think is the medical knot. You see it makes a twirl like that automatically. They say a double one initially should do the trick. And then you pull in opposite directions to secure it. There we go. And then another single one pulling through this away. Voila, there's the first stitch done. Obviously not correct because there's still some flesh sticking out there. But let's have another go. So this is obviously going to take quite a bit of practice. Let's try another one. I must say the video seems much easier than um, actually doing it. And I think bearing in mind being stressed out and whilst everything's going around on the boat, a bit of concentration. Now also the distances here depends on the length of the wound and everything and how deep it is. So let's try about a centimeter apart. Oops. And then another thing is you're not supposed to pinch the meat here or the flesh. You can cause more harm. So you basically use this. I can show you again. It's basically just to support this side so you can put the needle in. And on the other side, same thing, just support the flesh there. Let it come out that side. There we go, same thing. About three centimeters. Voila. Okay, now for that. Okay, is that, they'll explain exactly how to grip this side and how not to grip it and the whole lot and all the mistakes you can make. Okay, this is supposed to come this way. Oh, I, see, it's one of the mistakes I made. I didn't grip this properly to come this way. And then we do another single one. And we pull it this way. I've got an idea, my. There we go. Stitch number two. Voila. I think Frick better brace himself. Oh, sorry for me tying the meat around my leg. I've got no extra pair of hands to help you with this demonstration. So instead of Miss Piggy running around all over the place, I thought let me just tie it down. And I think this is going to feel more like it. Okay, let's try another one. See if I can get the third one right. It's a bit awkward working it on this angle. Okay, in again. So you guide this side with this side. And let's see if we can do a third one. Now, so those are the, I'm sure there's a lot of lacerations. 
At this point in time, what I can mention as well, if it's not too big, it is known that the people use regular super glue to, um, to put on the wound and just close it up. It works like a charm apparently. And um, apparently there's a medical super glue also available, which I couldn't find anywhere here in South Africa. So I'm sure some of you folks are fortunate enough to already have it in your countries. So that is another option for smaller lacerations, is just to put super glue on. And there's stitch number three. Oh, they're not the same size. But I guess it'll have to work for now, eh? Miss Piggy will be fine. There we go. So that's, that's basically the one option, is to do stitching. The other option is to do super glue. And then for smaller ones as well, you get these little strips which I'm sure most of you know about as well by now, which works ample as well. So you can just, I can show you here, it's little strips like that. So you basically use it as a stitch. So you get, just get to hold the flesh together and then you just stitch it. So you do a couple of those and that will work fine. So that's another option. That is as far as stitching is concerned. So we've got the super glue or the medical glue option. We've got the regular stitching option. And then we can use these strips as well. That's another option to go. Another? Okay. Another thing I think that happens all the time are these little numbers. If they get stuck in your hand, in your leg, in your foot, wherever. I'm going to attempt at showing you how to get rid of it. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, let's. Oh, this doesn't feel good, guys. It feels pretty sore. And the dermis and the epidermis of the pig is quite, quite tough. So let's just see that we can get in, in the. Oh, there we go improperly okay one by hook stuck now what i saw on the video clip i thought was ingenious is okay with at least pain to your patient i think this is probably the most painful but the quickest way to remove a hook so the whole idea is to keep everything horizontal and the hook up straight and then you just apply pressure, a little bit of pressure there just to keep it up straight and then you give it a good yank but preferably completely horizontal if you're going to go that way or this way you're bound to take a pound of flesh with it so try and keep it as straight as possible and then just a there we go a quick yank okay so that's method number one Method number two, um, okay, let's try it with this hook here. Method number two, I think is probably the most used method. So once your hook is in, to push it all the way through, which might not sound very kind on whoever you are administering it to, but I'm sure a couple of shots of rum might help a bit. And please just bear in mind with whatever I do here, your normal cleaning procedure and disinfectant procedure and whatever should always still apply. Then you take a pair of pliers and that little nasty little hook there at the bottom, you just give it a, a good... There we go. No more nastiness. And then you can just take it all the way back out again. No hooks there. The other method, which I think is, I'm just going to use the same holes again because this is really tough going through here. So the other method would be, can you believe it, I'm still battling. Simply push it through again. As I said, not necessarily the most pleasant of things to do, but I'm sure with the help of a bit of pliers and everything. 
there we go to cut that off okay I don't think my pliers are gonna do it they are little girly pliers so that's not gonna work for this one but be sure to have a decent pair of pliers on board or cutters or whatever and then you just put it all the way out and that would be the third option to get rid of the hook Okay, another thing is to be hit by an object, and I'm not speaking about flying fish. The boom, that's why it's called a boom. That's the sound that makes when it hits your head. So I think just um, open communication when you're jumping and driving and everything, so that everybody just on the same page. So just be aware of the boom. Sunburn, everybody reckons that is actually supposed to be the number one. So whatever you do, stock up on the highest SPF level that you can possibly lay your hands on. The sun is dangerous out there on the ocean, so let's stock up on that. Seasickness, I think we all can deal with that. Well, we all know about that one. So yes, find out about your crew and your passenger, your, your guest, whoever's on board. Are they prone to seasickness? But anyway, always keep seasickness sickness tablets prevention fresh air keep busy no greasy fatty foods before the time um i think in america it's called seven up it's it's probably more palatable than water so keeping all those into con things into consideration i think the, the most important thing is just to stock up and see sick tablets and just sail it out ride it out that's the only way you can get rid of it yeah, and there's, there's a couple of very poisonous fish down there, so I'm going to be posting a link down there as well. Apparently, boiling water, as long as it doesn't scald your hand, as hot as what you possibly can, stick your hands in boiling water, that um, attacks the protein of the, of the venom. So that kills it as well, but there's, there's, there's a nice video down there how this guy shows exactly how it's a bit dramatized, but he shows you how it's done. So please yeah, have a look at that one. Medical kits, um, I'm going to be posting a link for that as well. There's a site there that, that spe specifies specifically marine medical it, kits. I found that very informative. So I'll post the link below. So just go and check it out and you can, I think you can actually order from them online as well. Okay, the, the medical kits, I think everybody has their own preference of how to, how to stow them, um, what is preference what is not um, I quite like the idea of different pouches I think what you should have is probably one of these little grabber bags and then you keep a little bit of everything in this bag so you just replenish as you use it and a nice way I think is just to have one and they're completely removable so if you've got a laceration for instance so you keep all your laceration goodies in one bag so if there's emergency you run in you only grab the laceration bag. So it's not having to grab the whole bag. It's already cluttered on board. So um, just grab a little bag. I love that idea. And then the one can be over-the-counter stuff that you put in the one. The one can be for pain. The other one can be bandages. So you can play around with that. But I think your bulk storage you should have somewhere else. And then you keep a bit of everything. Decide on how many grab bags you want. Um, whether you want to grab the whole kit. Or you just grab two that's all you're going to need and then they've got little things like this as well it's got that like kidney shaped little thing so that is it's dressing treatment so a laceration and if you have to dress a wound everything's in here from the cleaning of the wound the antiseptic everything so you just have a couple of these ready as well so then you just grab that as well i just found that very fascinating and I uh, quite like the idea. You can either color code it or you can just put labels on each bag. And as I said, have your backup bags in wherever you stow your stuff. And then obviously your, as I showed previously with attempting to do my stitching. <laughs> so you have one of these. Um, so it's got all your, all your fancy magodies, your pliers, your scissors, your whatever you cut. You need in here. So everything's in here. It's a nice little nifty handy bag. So you just grab that as it goes. So I would suggest putting your stitching stuff in this bag as well. So that would be a one grabber. And then there's one thing here that I don't know if a lot of people know. 
I dealt with this oh, a couple of years ago when I was on some other remote island off the coast of South Africa. And it, it's a it's an ear candle. I don't know if you know about this. But it actually I actually saw somebody using it and it worked like a charm. Earache or if you've got that buzz in your ear, especially as sailors when you dive a lot, the, you know, you get fog in your ear, oh, a moisture in your ear and everything. So there's always this buzzing sound. What could be a little hoho in your ear? Um then you just use this thing. It's you let the person lie on their side and there's like a little thing that you put over it because you need to light that it's like a wax it's like a beeswax so you shove that in the ear not too deep and then stand up straight and you light the top so whatever falls down will fall on that right for go back into the ear again and i think it burns for up to eight hours if i'm not mistaken and once it's done you just put it in a bowl and it just actually it sounds disgusting, but it actually sucks up whatever's in there that wasn't supposed to be in there. And it's instant relief as well. It seriously works like a bomb. I think there's two of these in a packet, so you just stock up in these as well. And that is basically, I think, roughly just a quick rundown on, on medical assistance for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's hope we don't need any of this stuff. But do take care and see you next time. Bye. Feel the spray of the waves on my face. Atlantic Indian Ocean Blue. Whoa, land in sight to start.